Shape It Up live show. And today we are talking about how to stay consistent. I hope you will stick around with me for the entire show because I'm going to give you seven tips on how to stay consistent on your weight loss journey. Plus, I have some two bonus tips at the very end of this video, so I hope you'll stay tuned. Um, and I also will be doing a Q&A at the end, so you are welcome to pop in any questions that you have. If you think of one while we're talking, go ahead and put it in there. Sometimes the comments are a little bit delayed, so feel free to comment as we go along, and I will answer them all at the end. All right, so if we have never met, hello, my name is Nicole Simonin. Um, I started Shape It Up back in 2006 after I had my first baby. And since then, I've been helping women get fit, and I have helped many women not only just lose inches, but also to learn how to keep them off permanently. So my mission is to share my information with you in ways especially like this Shape It Up live show on Facebook. Um, I also do blog posts, which have tons of information available to you. And I also work with clients either in person or online. So if you are in the United States and you would like to have some help, I can help you anywhere in the United States as long as you have a phone. Um, so you can ditch those pesky pounds whenever you want. You can schedule a mini consult with me at shapeitupfitness.com if you want more information or if you're ready to get started. All right, so let's dive into today's topic, how to be consistent. So if you are familiar with Malcolm Gladwell, he stated that you needed to have 10,000 hours of practice in whatever you're deciding to do in order to, be, to master that skill or master that subject. So let's take a look at your life, reflect in your own mind. What are you a master at? What have you spent 10,000 hours on? I know for me, I grew up in the ballet world. I was a professional ballet dancer um, two careers ago, and I am positive I put in at least 10,000 hours of dance technique, dance classes, and whatnot. Same thing with personal training. I am constantly learning about new aspects of personal training, and I feel I have mastered that as well. And But I'm not done learning, because you can never stop learning. There's so much more to learn. and. Um, so I feel like I've definitely put in my 10,000 hours in there as well. So what have you become a master of over your lifetime? So how many times have you sat in front of your favorite dessert, and we'll say a donut, because that's like my kryptonite, and you thought to yourself, okay, I'm not going to eat this. And then within seconds, you have devoured the entire donut. If you've done that 10,000 times, guess what you have mastered? <laughs> you have mastered not listening to yourself and just not, you know, giving into instant gratification. So how many times have you started working out and only a week or so later, this is big for if you're a New Year's resolutionist, I like to call them, um, you know, you've only lasted for a week in your workouts and then you gave up, you have become a master of not following through. Now, before you start going down this deep, dark spiral of how <laughs> awful your life is and how you haven't mastered anything but horrible things, um, the good thing is, is that you can become aware of it. And the greatest thing is, is that you can change it. So I'm going to help you give, uh, I'm going to give you some tips on how to start changing that and be a little bit more consistent. All right, so stick with me here because I have a little analogy. If you get to know me, you know I like analogies. So, so I want you to imagine that you're in a forest and this forest has never been touched before. There's no traces of anybody walking in the forest or anything. So there's lots of trees and lots of brush on the ground. And you decide to take the right path. Now, just a side note, for Facebook Live, I don't know what it looks like on your end, but when I go to the right, I actually see it go to the left. So it's reversed for me. I hope it's not reversed for you. So I do know my right from my left, just to clarify. <laughs> so you're in the forest. It's never been walked on. So you're taking the right-sided path. 
and you have taken this path many times. Day after day, you come back to the forest and you take that path, and eventually you go down the same path and you're starting to worn, wear out a trail. The trees are kind of out of the way because you've managed to maneuver around them. The brush is kind of cleared because, again, you've worn out that path. Now you decide, well, I've seen what I've seen on the right side. Let's go try the left side of the forest, and let's see what's over there. So now you're starting from square one. There's the brush, the trees, everything is in your way. And you might go down that path and it might be very rocky and bumpy and there might be obstacles in the way. And you might go down it once and then maybe say the next day you come back, you're like, that left path was way too hard. I'm gonna go to the right side today. And then you go down the right side and you wear that path down a little bit more. So as you keep going, the more you take one path, the more worn down that path will become. So if you take that left path and it doesn't become worn out because there's too many challenges for you, you're never gonna wanna take that path. So the problem with the right path, the right-sided path, is that path is leading to things that you necessarily don't want. The left side, however, has everything that you want, you desire, everything that you say you want is on the left side. Which path are you willing to take? Are you willing to take the path that's already been worn down? Or are you willing to take the path that's a little bit bumpy? So this is what happens when you're trying to lose weight and the habits that we create. So if for the longest time you have come home from work, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've come home from work, you've plopped on the couch and you eat some takeout, that is your right-sided path. That is the path that you have worn out that Sucker is totally worn. You know how to do that without even thinking about it. If you've now decided you wanted to lose weight and you've decided that sitting on the couch and eating takeout is not the way you're gonna succeed in your goals, the first day you come home and you decide not to sit on that couch and you decide to make a healthy dinner, it's gonna be really super hard because that left-sided path is not as worn down as, it, as the right side of the path. So the good thing is, is that the more times you wear down that path, the easier it becomes. So the more times you choose to come home after work and make a healthy dinner and skip sitting on the couch, the easier it's going to become. So my analogy with the, the forest is, is, you know, from probably since you were a very small child, you have taken this one right-sided path. And that, may, that path has gotten you to where you are today. So if you're overweight, we're just going to say that path has gotten you there. Now you want to take the left side of path because you want to lose weight and it's going to be very challenging because you're so used to doing that one path. So one of the things um, for consistency is if you really want to make lasting changes, you, you have to be consistent, right? The more times you walk down that path, the more worn it gets. So being consistent is really essential to making any real lasting changes in your life. Again, the good thing is, is if you haven't been consistent in the direction you want to go in, it's just a skill that you can learn. So my first tip is name your goal. I am so um, excited about like big goals. I don't like small little mamby pamby goals. <laughs> I like big bold goals. Um, so when you make a goal, it really has to have some meaning for you. And it really has to light you up. Like there's something inside of you that has to go, yeah, I really want that goal. Uh, I always ask clients when I talk to them on the phone a lot of times for my um, little mini consults that I do. And I ask them when all is said and done, what would you like to see happen? And a lot of women will say, oh, I just want to lose weight or I want to lose 50 pounds. That's not very exciting. That's not your why. That is not the reason you get up in the morning and go work out. You need to figure out what is your why. Why do you want to lose those 50 pounds? Is it to walk up the steps and not feel out of breath? Is it playing with your grandkids or your, or your children, keeping up with them? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, is it that you don't want to take medication for the rest of your life? Something like that. Sorry, I need to get a drink. Hold on. I was talking on the phone to a phone consult right before this, so my voice is dry. So, sorry about that. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. All right. So, so you may, you got to find a goal that really lights you up, something that's very exciting to you, something that is helps drive you towards what you want to accomplish. 
Number two is you have to schedule your goal. So once you have your goal, you need to break it down into small achievable goals and small steps. Those steps need to go in your calendar like they are an appointment with your boss. They should be top priority. <clears throat> Um, so once you schedule in your calendar, you know, priorities get done. Don't tell me that you don't have time. That is like one of the biggest excuses that everyone has is that they don't have enough time to work out or get healthy or be fit. Sorry, that is a bold-faced lie. We all have 24 hours in the day. You are choosing how to spend your time and what you're doing. So if you really want to find out what's important to you, for a week, log in every 15 minute increments what exactly you are doing with your time. Just get a notebook and start writing down what you're doing every 15 minutes. You know, obviously if you're asleep, you're not gonna log 15 minutes, but um, log every 15 minutes what you do throughout the day. You will be really surprised because it will be very eye-opening as to what you are spending your time on and what you consider is your priorities. So do that and get back to me, I wanna hear about that. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> sorry. Number three, you need to ignore your inner child. As soon as you set these big, huge goals that all light you up and get you all excited, your brain will like within two seconds go, <laughs> what? It's going to seize up on you and it's going to go, heck no. Why on earth would you choose this goal? You can't do it. Um, You've got to be kidding me. You, there's no way you're going to do it. You've never accomplished anything before, so why is now different? Your brain is going to start telling you all these crazy things and trying to sabotage you and tell you you can't do it. Um, so if you can make it past your negative Nelly, then when you get to the step where you actually have to do something, your brain's going to be like, mm, no, I don't want to. <laughs> That's your inner child basically having a temper tantrum and saying, no, I don't want to. I'm going to have a fit if you make me work out um, or if you make me eat broccoli or whatever it is, it's going to have a fit. So be aware of that ahead of time and know that that is totally normal. Um, the more you can get past these thoughts, again, with consistency, so the more times you tell that inner child to either be quiet or, you know, calmly. It's like having a child. It, you know, I know my kids, I don't think they ever had a temper tantrum in the grocery store. They might have once, and I think I left them in the aisle. I kept an eye on them, but I left them in the aisle. <laughs> and they had their little fit, and then they came back over, and I never had a problem again. It's the same thing with our own inner child. Let it, You can have a fit, but I'm not going to react to it. So same thing like, you know, I told you about the donut. If you're sitting there with the donut, and you're having a fit inside your head because you can't eat the donut, it's okay. It just the more you wear the path down of, okay, I don't want the donut, the more consistent it will be and the closer you'll get to your goals. <clears throat> All right, number four, get accountability. Ideally, I would hire someone to keep you on track. With all my training programs, I give access to my clients to me pretty much 24-7. Other than the times that I'm sleeping, you have they have access to me. They can ask me any questions, that kind of thing. So I am big on accountability with my clients. Um, I almost feel like I have a spidey sense, if you're a Spider-Man fan, a spidey sense about when they're kind of self-sabotaging themselves, and I find myself texting them, and they'll be like, oh, I was just thinking of whatever. So... Um, it's good to have accountability. Don't get Aunt Susie and don't pay some $5 little program that you don't really care about. Invest in yourself and put mon put skin in the game. You know, if you paid a trainer $1,000, I bet you you would show up and you give it all you got because you put $1,000 on the line and you're going to hopefully get your money's worth out of what you're using. So definitely get accountability. Number five, don't slash your tires. Every day is not going to be rainbows and unicorns and happiness and sprinkles, okay? We, we know that. Um, many days you're not going to want to do it. Again, that goes back to the inner child. But again, when you wear it on that path, each time you do that, it's the left side. Every time you do that, it's going to get easier and easier. So this journey does not need to be perfect. Um, you know, if you started to learn a language 
and you started to say you learned, tried to learn French, um, you're not going to make complete sentences. If you try to talk to a French person in, in French, you're probably not going to make any sense to them. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. And you may slip out and say some curse words and not even realize it because there's like one letter off from the word. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't understand why people just assume that because they're now trying to lose weight that they automatically have to get it 100% perfect. Nothing that you start is going to be perfect. And even when you've been in it for a while, some it's not going to be perfect. Um, so you got to ditch the all or nothing mentality. And um, I love this analogy. This is from Keith Klein. He is a nutritionist. And um, he says, if you get a flat tire, you don't go out side of the car and slash the other three tires. You fix the tire that's, you know, blown and you move on. So it's the same thing with your food and, you know, weight loss journey. If, you know, if you mess up, so say you, quote unquote, you know, you ate a whole bag of haagen a whole bag, a whole pint of haagen -Dazs. You ate the haagen -Dazs. Figure out why you ate it and then move on. Don't just go, well, screw it. I'm just going to eat, you know, a bag of chips and everything else. Okay. So be nice to yourself. It's not about perfection. It's really about being consistent. Um, number six, choose your path wisely. Um, going back to the path analogy, you know, every time you choose that right-sided path, the path that is not getting you what you want and is reinforcing old habits, that's what you're doing. You're constantly reinforcing those old habits. Um, the more you pick the left side of the things that you say you want, the more you're going to reinforce that path. And new habits will come, again, with consistency. Um, number seven, you have to let go of your stories. I am going to touch on this a little bit more in another video. But a lot of times the things that you think about yourself um, or, or situations are not necessarily true. And you think that they're true because that's just what you've been taught to believe. But a lot of those stories are not serving you and they're actually inhibiting you from doing what you say you want to do. Um, so for just now, until I come out with that video, just think about, um, just observe your thoughts and what feelings come up when, you know, you're presented with, say, a donut in front of you. Like, what are you thinking about? What, what's going through your mind? So two bonus tips. Number one, always have a backup plan. I also did a blog post on this, and I'm going to put the link after the video is done, I'll put the link in the comment section. Um, so if you are catching this video on a different post, because sometimes I will repost them, the link may not be there, but you can go to shapeitupfitness.com and um, in the search bar, put in plan A and it should pop up. But basically, so you want to have a backup plan. I usually tell my clients, you know, you need a plan A, plan B, a plan C, you might need a D or an E. So you know, each one is like one is ideal, one is if you're having a situation that's minor, and then the other one is like a major situation. So definitely check out that video and that post, um, and that will give you help on getting a backup plan in order. <clears throat> so the second bonus tip is make it non-negotiable. If you really, really, truly want what you say you want, nothing is going to stand in your way. So really just get out of your way, do what Nike says and just do it. Um, can you really, like, just imagine if you did all the things that you said you wanted to do. Could, like, wow, we, the world would be an amazing place. Um, you know, we'd be, we'd be kicking ass and taking names. That's all I have to say. So, <laughs> so make it non-negotiable. Make your goal high priority and you're just going to do it. Do what you got to do. So what if you stumble, you fall, you get back up, you do it again. Um, so the bottom line is, is if you're consistent, you are going to see results. Um, you have to be all in on your goals. You can't, you can't half ass it. There's a, um, and I'm sorry for the, the curse words that are coming in today, <laughs> but um, there's a great meme out there that basically says um, if you give half ass effort, you're going to get half ass results. So if you really want to lose body fat and you know you have all the resources and you are wearing down the path towards health and fitness, 
the left side of the path, you will get there eventually, but there's going to be obstacles. Um, so make sure you're all in and make it non-negotiable, okay? And be consistent. It's really what it, it's all it boils down to. All right, so um, if you would like help reaching some of your goals, you can go to shapeitupfitness.com and you can request a free 10-minute phone consult with me. be happy to talk to you um, and give you some advice and some help, all right? Okay, so does anybody have any questions? Um, I'm going to wait a second and see if there's any questions. While we are waiting, please join me for next Wednesday at noon um, Eastern Time, and we're going to be talking about overcoming feeling defeated, which happens a lot when you're trying to make changes, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so I am not seeing any um, questions coming in, and we are at the 20 minute mark. So I am going to wrap it up. If you do have a question and say it's just not coming in, um, I do answer questions afterwards, um, after the video is over. So go ahead and post them, and I will be happy to answer them. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come hang with me. And I keep forgetting, if you've watched any of my YouTube videos at the end, I always say, remember to get fit be fierce, and have no limits. So um, I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for the next Shape It Up Live. And in the meantime, you can check me out on Facebook or at shapeitupfitness.com. So thanks so much for being here, and I'll see you next week. Take care.